Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The Chamber of Mine announced earlier this week that South Africa delivered its best mine safety improvements in seven years in 2010. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer is in the studio to tell us more about safety in South Africa's mines. Welcome Martin. Thanks Shannon. 40 fewer miners died in 2010 than in 2009, which is a 24% reduction. What does this reveal about South Africa's mine safety? The big thing is the 24%. Nobody can celebrate the fact that there's still 128 deaths. You know, there were 168 deaths the year before. Mm. Nobody can celebrate that. I mean, you've got to go for zero death. But what they are celebrating is the percentage reduction. You know, they targeted at least 20% a year over a, a period towards 2013. And uh, at least the 24% exceeds that. But I mean, you know, it's still a heartbreaking situation mm -hmm. where people shouldn't have to go to work to die, you know, with a ceiling falling in. I mean, if we came to work here and every now and again the ceiling fell in and killed mm -hmm. a few people, I mean, would we still be in this office? You know, we might not. And I mean, there's a whole morality around this. I mean, is it moral to mm -hmm. continue to mine if you're going to kill your workers? And they should be spending more to make sure that this doesn't happen. Now, in 2003, the Chamber, Government and Labour um, came up with a 10-year plan to reduce fatalities for, until 2013. What's been the progress so far? Well, the big thing is they want to come into line with the rest of the world. So they're saying by 2013, we must be normalised. In other words, South Africa is an abnormal situation. There are too many people dying. It's not like China, of course. I mean, they really need to work on it. Um, but we uh, are also in an abnormal situation. Too many people die. All right. We're more labor intensive than everybody else and we're deeper than everybody else. But we've, we've got to make sure that you can mine safely at those depths. So otherwise, do we have a, a moral imperative not to mine? I mean, you know, it's, uh, so they're saying we want to be normalized. We want to be the same as the Ontario benchmark. We want to be the same as, you know, Australians. We want to be the same as the Americans. We want to get into that line. And they've said we must do it by 2013. That is the target. And they're supposed to make sure that they improve by 20% a year. I think uh, they gave themselves a period that was about a five-year period. And so until they reach this normalization period, and then of course go for zero harm. The, the target is always zero harm. Now on that note, uh, social scientist Dr. Philip Frankel is very skeptical that they can meet this. Yes. Can you elaborate? Yeah, he's the falling ground uh, editor and uh, you know, he studies this in depth and um, he's, uh, he's got a military background as well, so he's quite precise. Mm. And he's saying, look, you've got to walk the talk. You know, it's no good just talking and uh, he feels that uh, they're not doing that. Um, look, there are also some people who whisper in my ear that I should interrogate those figures more closely. Now, that is too ghastly to contemplate. I mean, if there is a situation where people are actually dying in these mines, but they're being put down as having died in hospital from pneumonia, mm. you know, or other gerrymandering with the figures, that is too ghastly to contemplate. I haven't got any evidence of that, but I certainly have a few whispers that this could be happening, and some people say it is happening. Now, that is ghastly. So hopefully they're not gerrymandering with the figures and they've really got to walk their talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time we go to a presentation, what does it start off with? Safety. You know, it's, it's no good uh, having the Bible if you don't practice what it says, you know. Mm -hmm. So we've got to really look at this uh, with, with great sincerity. I mean, if we're going to mine gold, it's great for the economy. But gold can be mined elsewhere in the world. You know, if you're going to kill a whole lot of people in doing it, should you continue to do it? Yeah. You know, you have some companies like um, Goldfields, you know, which say that you know, if we can't mine safely, we won't mine at all. Well, I think that needs to permeate the whole industry. And many of them are, you know, really sincere about this. And it breaks their heart every time they have to announce a death. And as we can see, you know, the seismics can't be blamed because, you know, you can take physical uh, support action to, to even counteract those, those seismic. So it's got to be done. We've got to at least be normalized and then go for, for zero harm. I think uh, you know, the future is going to be more mechanized. I think it's going to be less labor intensive. But one has to consider that when we go deeper. You know, we're going deeper, it's getting hotter. Mm. Should people be down there? But all the you know, attempts at mechanization in the narrow veins haven't really succeeded that well. You know, we see with the, uh, when there's a very big deposit you know, taller than our ceiling. Mm. And you can move big jumbo drills in there and it's gold and they can still mine it in a mechanized manner, but, but more difficult when you're crawling on your belly, you know, to get it. 
What are the Chamber's plans for tw uh, 2011 for safety? Oh, you know, it's, it's quite uh, interesting to listen to, you know, the number of people they want to train up as, uh, you know, safety representatives and uh, shop stewards. Mm. Uh, because there's one thing about the mining industry which is um, very good. It, it, it works as a collective. You know, it, it involves the government. It's always got this tripartite approach where there's business, labour and government working together. And I think the rest of South Africa should take a cue from that because uh, it, it does help you know, when, when you're all facing north together. <clears throat> and one of the things they want to do is to train up 40,000 uh, of these um, safety officials, mm. safety representatives and, and shop stewards. And they're planning to, to do this in a very high-tech manner, you know, using simulation technology and computer-aided uh, uh, um, aspects to, to make sure that they can fast-track a very high level of consciousness around safety, uh, that there is a behavior change. You see, this is one of the complaints that South Africans, I mean, look how many of us die on the road. You know, we, we, we're just not a safe bunch of people. Mm. Um, we quite, um, we live close to the edge. You know, if you go to Australia, you see the people, they don't break the speed limit, they don't park in the wrong place. South Africans, they break every, you know, law. Mm. And, and, and so you can't just blame the mines. You know, there are so many people dying on our roads. 1,360 during the holiday period alone. I mean, you know, this is really, in fact, the, the mines are also a reflection of this cavalier attitude in South Africa where we close to the edge all the time and death is never too far away. So behavior change is also a very big thing. And if they can get these people trained up with a huge consciousness, perhaps um, from, from the, the, the actual worker side, there also has to be a contribu contribution. It's not a one-way ticket, you know. So you've got to have a government, business, and also labor really working together on this sincerely. Because I think it, uh, you know, that might have been missing. Our behavior in South Africa has got to change. Mind behavior has got to change. Well, let's hope we see a definite reduction in 2011. I hope so. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insights into what's happening in the mining world.